The impeachment of Andrew Johnson was the most polarizing and cumulative point during the Reconstruction era. Post-war tensions ran high as two main factions were left after the untimely demise of President Lincoln. The Radical Republicans vied for harsh punitive measures on the Southern secessionists. Johnson's restoration policy, on the other hand, offered general amnesty, and he continually opposed the Radical legislative agenda. Congress could only override a few of his vetoes, setting the stage for a grand confrontation between Congress and the President. The tangible tension in the air finally materialized when Johnson made the fateful decision to remove the staunch Radical Republican Secretary of War, Edwin M. Stanton. Claiming that this was a violation of the Tenure of Office Act, the Radical Congress moved to impeach Johnson on the bold, albeit vague, grounds of high crimes and misdemeanors. The trial was conducted in the Senate. 35 senators voted guilty and 19 non-guilty. As per the Constitution, a two-thirds majority was required for conviction. The Congress was merely one vote away from successfully impeaching President Johnson. However, what would happen if one, only one, of the decisive senators decided to vote in favor of the impeachment, completing the two-thirds majority? In this case, Johnson would be successfully impeached and the next in line to assume the role of the presidency would be the President Pro Tempore of the United States Senate, Benjamin Wade. Wade was one of the most powerful and radical Republicans in the Congress, decrying all of Johnson's restoration policies. I believe that the successful impeachment of Andrew Johnson and the subsequent presidency of Benjamin Wade would bring a slew of socioeconomic changes, as Wade was extremely liberal in his views on suffrage and social rights, as well as his views on the economy. In addition, there would be political effects, as a successful impeachment would establish a precedent and change the balance of power. Benjamin Wade was indeed unique. He supported women's suffrage, labor union rights, and unequivocal equality for African Americans. If he was elected as president, he'd be very liberal for his time. Although much of his proposed legislation would be rejected by Congress simply due to its sheer progressiveness, he could possibly make slight, tangible advancements and largely symbolic gains. In addition, legitimate support by president would be strong catalysts for the women and labor movements in the mid-19th century. If such endorsements occurred, the progressive era could be started in the mid-19th century as opposed to the 20th century, expediting the liberalization of post-war America. The most bold social advancements, however, would be in the field of African-American civil rights. Wade was one of the authors of the Wade-Davis Bill, which was previously vetoed by Lincoln. If he assumed presidency, he could possibly reenact it, requiring a majority of allegiance pledges by the South. Reconstruction would be carried out viciously and without compromise for the Southerners. It is not unrealistic to assume that Wade would systematically attempt to destroy the deeply entrenched social patterns in the South. In addition, he could impose other social verdicts in the South, like integrated schools and universal recruitment of blacks in the army. Wade would probably completely empower the Freedmen's Bureau and the Civil Rights Bills. It is clear that Wade's presidency would kickstart early progressivism and strengthen the previously mild attempts at racial integration. During the time of Reconstruction, radical Republicans were not very focused on making any economic repairs to the South or the nation in general. Wade, however, had more character when it came to the economy. Wade, a fervent radical, was an advocate for the redistribution of confiscated Confederate lands among freedmen. Such an action would completely transform the economic hierarchy of the South and have lasting effects to this very day. Unlike most, however, Wade was quite leftist in his views. He was an outspoken critic of 19th century capitalism. He is quoted as saying, an economic system which degrades the poor man and elevates the rich, which makes the rich richer and the poor poorer, which drags the very soul out of a poor man for a pitiful existence is wrong. In short, Wade understood the concept of disparity much before the disillusioned progressives of the 20th century. He may have very well tried to advocate a more decentralized regulated economy. Like his social agenda, many of his proposals, but not all, would probably be rejected but he would still be able to instill ideas of economic progressivism into the collective American psyche, possibly causing the early formation of leftist political groups like the Socialists in America. Finally, the impeachment of Johnson would have lasting political effects. The impeachment would set quite a revolutionary precedent, that is, making impeachment an effective political weapon. If this precedent was established, modern politics would be very turbulent and vitriolic, and administrations would be more ephemeral as impeachment suits would become more common. It would effectively be a cause of more chaos in the political battlefield. Secondly, it would shift the balance of power, giving the Radical Congress complete power over the legislative and executive bodies during early Reconstruction, causing them to have a lot more influence during its course. All in all, this alternate history scenario is a brilliant exercise in the butterfly effect. A single vote, as I mentioned above, would be suffice to impeach Andrew Johnson and install Benjamin Wade as the president. 
This would bring upon an early start to social liberalism, bring upon harsh and radical economic transformations, and would mold the political landscape by setting a precedent and shifting the balance of power.